Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is Changing It Up number two. Now, here's Pastor Kerry. Amen. Praise God. So, last week I preached about, um, well, the title of the sermon was called Change It Up. Um, today's sermon is called Change It Up. I'm preaching the same sermon. Um, no, actually, it's a part two of my um, it's a short two-sermon series. And, you know, it's the New Year's. And, and if we remember last week, um, we talked about, you know, every year, you want to make the same changes, and it seems to be the, um, the same thing happens. And I asked the question, do, you, do we really ever change? Sometimes our, our, um, we can change our behaviors, and, 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 um, and we can you know, modify some things, but we're basically the same people we were as children. Um, you know, when, my kid, my, when we have a family reunion, when my brothers and sisters um, get together, we are really, I act like I'm five years old. Um, we really are the same people. In, 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 in human eyes, in human sense, as we were, as we were as a child. So we go through New Year's resolution, and we make these um, promises to ourselves that we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. And by the time Super Bowl comes along, we're back to the same behaviors of the, as, as we were. So, and so my desire, the title, is to change it up. Let's, let's do something different because this doesn't seem to be working for us. Um, and so, but let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for, for your leading in our lives. Thank you for bringing all of us here to, to worship you. I pray, Father, that you guide us right now. Um, as we hear this message, Lord, may it be from you. Um, help us to recognize the power that you have um, and that uh, let, us, um, uh, let us have access to that power, Lord. Let us um, to, to, to allow you to work in our lives and, and truly um, um, make us um, the person uh, you want us to be. Um, you've created us. We're here on this earth for a reason. Um, help us, Lord, to, to live that reason, Father. So guide us now as we open your word and open our hearts to you, Lord. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, the verse we talked about last week is, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone the new is here. And this is Paul talking about um, that when we come to Christ, the old is gone and the new is here. Christ, or Paul believed that when we give our lives to Jesus, we are a new person. We aren't the same person in, in my family, like at my family reunion. I'm not, you know, I'm a five-year-old with, with the Fishers, but in Christ, I am the person that God made me to be. Right? I'm the person that God made me to be. So yes, there is a person that our nature, the, the, we live in this sinful nature, um, we live in this world that, um, it, that, is, that is product of this environment, product of, the, um, of our genetics, products of our circumstances. That is who we are. But Paul is talking about something there. When we give our lives to Christ, we become a new creation. We are a product of Christ. Amen? We are a product of Christ. So, so one of the things is, you know, we've given our lives to Christ. Um, hopefully all of you have, at one time or another, 
and realize your humanness is still there. Um, we have the rich man talking to Jesus that gives us a, a picture of this change that happens. Um, in Mark 10, verse 17, it says, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's a good question, right? And he sees the rabbi, he sees the teacher, Jesus, there, and he's, and he's sincerely asking the question. This is a rich man, a wealthy man. Sincerely asking the question, what must I do to experience eternal life? And he goes on, it says, Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know, that's an interesting comment from Jesus who we understand has never sinned before, right? So, and it's like, why is he, why is, um, why do you call me good? But what he's referring to is, you know, the humanness of, of our human nature. There is, there is nothing good. And it shows to me, again, what we talked about last week is when you just try to do good, you can't make yourself good. It's impossible. It is impossible. So like New Year's resolutions, you come in, I'm going to not eat this anymore. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, you know, and you're going to be a new and improved version of you. But you're not going to be, in this case, a good person, right? You're not going to be a new creation, what God is, what, what Paul was talking about earlier. And he, he even goes on and says, Jesus says this, you know, the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honor the father, um, your, you, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he says, decla he declared, all these things I have kept since I was a boy. What it's just saying is that here's this rich man asking for eternal life. And he's been a good I, you know, a person. He followed the laws. He's followed the law. And in his mind, he's followed it perfectly in his mind, or as, as best as he could at least, right? And still, he's lacking that. He's still asking that question. He sees Jesus. He sees the healer, the, the one who restores all the, uh, 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 who walks on this earth and, and is turning everything into, um, to uh, restoring everything. He sees him, and even though he's keeping all these commandments, he, there's something lacking for him to ask that question. Good teacher, how do I have eternal life? Those of you who have been going to church all your life and you've, you've um, gone to the vegetarian cooking schools, I encourage, I encourage you to keep on going, by the way, um, especially the one coming up soon. But... And, you know, been going and keeping the Sabbath and, and, and trying to be the best person you, can, you possibly can be, and you could still feel lacking, can't you? Right? That there's still something more. And here's this rich, not only is he not lacking in the religious department, he's not lacking in the physical department because he's rich. Right? He won the lotto, the $1.3 billion. <laughs> he doesn't need anything. He's keeping the commandments, and he's rich. He doesn't need anything. But Jesus walks by, and he senses him, and he says, good teacher, how can I have eternal life? Something is lacking here. 
And then Jesus says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When Paul says you will become a new creation, he isn't saying you're, not, you're, you're becoming a new and approved person again. He's asking this rich man to give it everything up. Surrender everything you have. You can try to do everything right, you know, try to keep the commandments and do everything perfect and try to be righteous on your own, but obviously it's not enough because you're still asking me this question. How do I have eternal life? Good teacher. Jesus asked him the question. Does that mean all of us need to give everything, give all of our riches, empty our retirement, part, um, retire, retirement fund and all that stuff away? Maybe. I, I'm not going to say no because Jesus said this. But what he is saying is you can imagine the thing he cherished the most is his wealth. He loved his, his position in his life. God had blessed him with, with such comfort of being in this, the circumstances he's in. And Jesus is picking, are you willing to give up what is most dear to you to follow me? Like Abraham and willing to sacrifice Isaac, Right? Are you willing to give up what's most dear to you for me? If we are honest with ourselves, you know, many of us would say no. And it's funny what's most dear to us, you know. A drug addict may be like a heroin might be what's most dear for him. I'm not willing to let go of this. Some of you, it may be um, soap opera TV, right? You know, what's funny is what is most dear for us? What is it that keeps us from becoming the new creation God wants us to be, right? The things that we hold on to. So what we do, like New Year's comes, and we have the New Year's resolutions, and we have piercing in our conscience, the Holy Spirit speaking to us. This is what I want you to let down, let go. And you look at it and say, I'm going to give up chocolate. <laughs> He's telling you to do this. Oh, I'm going to join the 24-hour fitness center and ride the stationary bike for 20 minutes every day. Right? We're willing to give up things that may, you know, yeah, that have meaning to us, but not what's dear, hits the core in our lives, right? And that's what the rich man, what Jesus was doing to the rich man. Is this money more important than your salvation? Right? Fill in the blanks in your life. Is this, think about it in your mind, is this whatever you have in front of you more important than your salvation? And then his, the rich man said, at this the man face fell and he went away sad because he had great wealth. Is it 
impossible for a person to change. The, the Bible says it's not. Paul says you become a new creation in, um, um, when you give your life to Christ. But there are many of us that act as if, as is um, the rich man. Jesus says, surrender and follow me. And the face, you see the expression on this, you can feel the expression on his face. This man's face fell and he way, went away sad. Right? We got a new puppy, right? And you can see a puppy's face is sad, right? Just the sadness that he wasn't willing to do what Jesus had asked him to do. It was too much. You wonder why we don't become new creations, why people don't change, because it's too much, right? This is pretty interesting here. It's like Jesus looked at them. Hold on, let me see. It was interesting. His response was that Jesus said he loved him. Even though he was... um, went away, Jesus had such great love for this person. But then the disciples, um, well, then he says here in, in Mark 10, 27, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God, right? Yes, all these things you, 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 you want, you change in your life to occur. All these things. And you've tried for 30 years, 40 years to become a different person, but they, it keeps coming back. Yes, on your own, it is impossible. It cannot happen. A leper cannot change its spots. But it, with God, all things are possible which means you can't do anything alone. You can't do it yourself. But then the question is, if the old is gone, why does it keep coming back? Right? How come always does it keep coming back? The old is gone and everything keeps coming back. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, this is Paul saying, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. One of the things is, it, it seems impossible, and sometimes the timing of this text, you can't really, like if someone who has lost their daughter in a horrible way, you don't tell them that you, God doesn't give you anything more than you can handle, right? That's really bad to say. And we all know our hardships, and at times we, we think we can't go any further than we are. But guess what? You're still here, Right? which means you've handled it, praise God, Amen. right? You're still here. And to always remember this, that even though you may feel alone, you may be feeling stretched out, and you feel, feel like you can't go any further, God is faithful to you, Amen. right? He is always with you. He is always there. This isn't about willpower, just taking it like a man or a woman, Right? This is about allowing God to do the changing in your life, right? So things keep coming up, entering into your life, keep popping up. The old, keeps, the old man keeps reminding me, reminding you of who you are, were, and, and Satan is working in your lives. He keeps popping you, trying to bring you down, put you into despair. But God is there. He's working in your life. He is faithful to you. What we need to do is be faithful to him, right? Faithful to him. Say, hey, Lord, yes, I've tried it on my own. I keep falling. 
Lord, I'm going to allow you to take my burdens. I'm going to allow you to take my trials. I am going to give it to you. I'm not going to do it on my own. So, and then, when all of this, knowing that God is faithful to you, remember this, this last time. First Corinthians, Paul says this in 1531, it says, I protest, brother, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, I die every day. This is what Paul does to keep going. Paul talks about like he has thorns in his flesh. He's, he's being reminded of his, his, his sinfulness. And think of who Paul was. He was a venomous murderer of Christians, right? Must have been reminded of all the bad things he's done. And he says to himself, he dies in Christ every single day. We kind of look at things in like time and space, right? Right? We look at our lives in time and space. We say, okay, I gave my life to Christ, and all of a sudden I'm doing, going back to my old ways. We look at it in the life and life, life side. But the reality is, we need to die every single day. You make a mistake today, guess what? Tomorrow, you die again. Die in Christ. You make a mistake tomorrow, guess what? You die again. Every single day we die. Which means, really, every single day we have hope in Jesus. That he is changing us. That we are a new person. Not even changing us. That we are changed. Right? When we give our lives to Christ, we are changed. We are a new person. Satan's going to whisper in your ears. Christ is, but you focus your, your life with Christ. You die every single day. I saw this, um, this um, someone wrote a Facebook post this week, and I didn't know how to respond to it, but I wanted to respond to it. It was, it was, it said that, it said that, you know, why, if someone makes me angry, why do I have to hold it inside? If I don't, if I just speak out, all I'm going to do is get in a fight with this person. And, and instead, I have to keep it inside and let it kill, kill me, right? And I didn't know how to respond to it at first. I was thinking, why is that the case? Obviously, God doesn't want people to be fighting, and God doesn't want people to be killing themselves, suppressing their feelings, right? But then I saw this research that was done. When someone is able to, when someone is bringing anger, if something's making you angry, if you're able to let it go, turn it over to the Lord, you become changed. You become a, it's like you become a new person. And every single time you do that, you become changed. Right? And what is letting go of? How do you let go of something? You give it to God. Right? So, we are new creations. When you've given your life to God, you are brand new. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity to, to come to you. Lord, you know our lives. You know our hearts. You know the, the battles that all of us in this room go through. You know the, the countless times that we've come to you and pleaded for, for your help. And, and at times, we've, we've, we've wondered if you were there. But Lord, you are there. You are here. You're with us right now. You're with us every moment of our lives. 
You are faithful to us. And we're so grateful for that. And Lord, you give us hope. You give us a way out. You give us mercy and forgiveness. You give us a key to be set free from all of the, the guilt and the things that burden us. When we give our lives to you, we become new. Lord, may this moment in time, we say, all of us here, say, Lord, be our, our Savior. Make our lives, my life, yours. And we live set free. Thank you, Father. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.